Hello and welcome to the DSO Imager channel. This is James and tonight's subject is the Sakaar Galaxy also known as M82. Now I recently finished uh, collecting data on M82 and um, I've been spending the past uh, few days running through that data and uh, I processed it a few times. Now if uh, you're one of my regulars and you keep an eye on the community tab on my YouTube channel you probably saw this picture over here. And so what I was sharing here is all the data that I've collected and you're seeing that correct. That is 114 hours and 24 minutes of total integration time. And the overwhelming amount of uh, that time was spent on HA. So you can see 78 hours of HA. We got about four to five hours of RGB and then a little over 20 hours on luminance. All right, and so why did I go after so much HA? Well, let me show a picture, uh, not one of mine, a pretty amazing image here. Uh, this shot here, now just uh, real quick. Oops. Uh, I mean, this is using Hubble data. We got data from the very large array of radio telescopes. I mean, so this is not a realistic image for anyone with an 8-inch telescope in their backyard. Uh, but I often use images like this uh, to get an idea of what's out there. And it's kind of cut off here. Uh, but you can see this structure over here. It's known as the cap uh, for M82. And so it's, I mean, it's like a little cap. Everyone's familiar with the HA regions. Uh, but this HA actually stretches out for a while. And so I wanted to see if I can pull this out. The cap, uh, I knew I would be able to get, but would I be able to pull any of this out? So that was part of the goal here. All right, and so this video, it's going to be a little different uh, in that uh, usually I do a workflow video. I mean, this is going to be a workflow video, but it's not... It's really a kind of a convoluted uh, process. It, it was very challenging the process. This I did run into uh, some issues with my data, and so I kind of uh, took a roundabout way. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to hoist this up as a as a way to do the processing. It was kind of uh, what I muddled through. Now the other thing that's a little different is usually my videos start showing the the unprocessed stacked images. Well, this is like the uh, third, what you're seeing here is like the third or fourth time that I've gone through this data. And so at this point, I started with data uh, that stacks, stacked images that have already been cropped and have already had uh, uh, dynamic background extraction, one, one pass of dynamic background extraction ran against them. So what you can see here is the luminance and uh, here's our red and green blue and here's all 70 plus hours of the HA and it's the HA where I had the most trouble with so despite having so much time on there uh, this image doesn't look too clean it's definitely still got some noise in there and we're seeing some kind of like um, I don't know some kind of stacking artifact this kind of moated uh, moated look here um, if we see here, you can see the cap's pretty visible. And we can see some structure out here. And in particular, there's a there was something over here, like a little bit of cloud of HA th that I noticed in the other picture. So we definitely got some structure here, but with the noise level being what it was, it was going to be really, really difficult to get this to show up uh, in the combined image. Now, uh, for luminance, I did something interesting. I basically took all of these uh, files here, the luminance, RGB, and the HA, and I just stacked them all together into a single integration. And uh, that's what this one here is. Now, uh, why did I do that? Well, with the previous processing attempts, uh, that I tried using the regular luminance by itself didn't yield a great result when adding the HA in there. 
uh, I lost too much signal from the luminance and the HA wasn't as prominent. It certainly didn't look like 70 hours worth. And so through some trial and error and trying different things, I determined, at least for this particular image, it worked out best to have a master luminance that was an integration of everything. Now for adding the luminance, excuse me, adding the HA to the RGB, uh, I used a pixel math process. Uh, I'm not going to go over the details of that because that's a long video in of itself. In fact, I actually did a video on that um, very topic. Uh, so if you're interested in seeing that, uh, here, let me show you really quick. Uh, go to my uh, channel page, like here in the search, like literally just do a search for HA and boom, there it is. First video. Oops. Uh, boosting your astrophotography with HA and in the description I also have a link to an article which is where I got uh, this procedure from. But basically what you need for this procedure is you need a uh, a cleaned out uh, RGB image so that's what you see here. Now let me do a auto stretch. This is um, RGB, I ran dynamic background extraction against the RGB image uh, and also ran um, um, Blur Exterminator. You can tell that by the stars. Uh, before running Blur, Extermin Blur Exterminator, I did do color calibration and for that I ran uh, SPCC. Uh, then you also need a clean uh, red channel and so that's what you see here. So I took this red, uh, ran DBE against it again, and also ran Blur Exterminator. And same deal with the HA. And for the Mega Stack LRGB HA, also ran Blur Exterminator against that. So the first step is to come up with a cleaned version of the HA. This is basically the HA data uh, subtracted against the red and uh, this is the formula that you use. Again all these details are covered in that article and in that video that I shared previously. I ran it with different values and I do believe uh, this is the one no that wasn't the one. Uh, this is the one that I ended up keeping. So here you can see the HA signal is pretty well isolated. It's pretty much the only thing uh, in this. You're not really seeing any of the galaxy itself in here. And then uh, what you do is you, you run the next formula which takes the HA clean that we use in okay so I did go with HA clean one and it uses it and applies some information over to the blue channel and the red channel uh, and this is the variable, so I tried many different variations of that. Uh, that's what all these enhanced RGBs are, and I think this is the one that I ended up going with ultimately. So, yeah, it does a pretty good job of integrating your HA with your RGB image. Now, in order to preserve all these uh, details in the HA, you really need to apply this method also to the luminance. And so that's what we have here. Uh, I have it uh, uh, less of a um, auto stretch on here just so we can see the detail. I mean, this is how I, it's, this is me spot checking to make sure that we're getting good representation of the HA. Uh, and also we can see some detail in the galaxy core. This is a tricky step, and I noticed a lot of times when doing this to the luminance channel, sometimes, it, well, most of the time, you end up losing some of the uh, detail in the galaxy core. All right, so I went over on a new workspace, and yep, there's the luminance, and there's the RGB. This is after I stretched them and um, combined them. And this is, oops, this is uh, what we ended up with right here. So this is the luminance applied to our RGB data, and uh, it's stretched. And this is the stage where I start my typical curves work. 
Now, as I mentioned, uh, I had processed this a bunch of times. And um, I wasn't liking how this was evolving. I thought the HA signal was okay, but I really didn't like where where the galaxy core was going. There wasn't a whole lot of color. This was something I had a hard time controlling was the color. And uh, the details in there are very washed out. Uh, too soft for my taste, especially given the amount of data that I got. Now what you're seeing on the right here was a previous processing attempt. I want to say it was the second time I processed this and I did it without uh, using this uh, technique for integrating HA. What you're seeing here is just that same master stack with the that includes the HA data and then I processed it like uh, regular LRGB. So I wanted to focus on the core on this version, right? So obviously we're not getting a whole lot of signal in the HA, but the galaxy is looking better. The details are looking better and the color is better. And so this is where things went into uh, a little unorthodox step here. I just uh, took pixel math and I added the two images together. <laughs> so I've done this before in the past. Uh, as a way of kind of uh, splitting the difference between two different types of processing. Uh, but I was getting a little frustrated, to be honest, and I was curious to see what would happen if I just added them together. And the result was pretty decent. I also tried uh, the max uh, formula in um, pixel math. That's where you do like max uh, bracket and then one comma two, close it, and it takes like the maximum values. On that one, the HA was too strong. Uh, so I went with the first one, uh, and that gave me this. So I thought this was a good compromise, uh, and and I felt like it got me back on a uh, on a, a better direction. And so I added the stars and did a little bit more work. I think I ended up here. This was like kind of the I don't want to call it the final image, but this was like a finished state. And I took a break after reaching this point. All the work from here is basically just minor tweaks, a little bit of curves, uh, playing around with um, Photoshop, messing around with the saturation a little bit, and uh, I ended up here. Now I did do one more uh, kind of weird thing. <laughs> uh, so this is where I was at, and I still wanted a little bit more contrast in here, and so uh, this is where I ended up, and to to get to this point, I used uh, this guy here, HDR multiscale transform. Now the funny thing is, is usually uh, you would use this step much earlier in the processing, and it can do really good stuff uh, on bright bright spots. So we're talking galaxy cores, we're talking the trapezium in M42 definitely a place where you can try using it. Now it is pretty strong and and many times I feel like it overcooks things a bit. Which by the way is where where I started using that uh, uh, pixel math script of adding two different images because you can apply, you can do a clone, apply HDR multiscale to one image, it'll do a nice job with the contrast but look overcooked and then you just add it to the uh, to the previous version and it's like splitting the difference. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I wanted a little bit more contrast in here and so I figured why not let's give it a go see what it does and it actually I think it did okay so that's before and that's after. You know, uh, I don't know which is better. Uh, I'm sticking with this for now. All right, so 114 hours. Uh, does it show? Mm, I don't know. I can I can see the cap barely. It's not well defined. I can't see any of that structure in between. Uh, I, the luminance had IFN. You can barely see any of it in here. I'm just trying to get the IFN and the faint HA. It, I think it was just beyond uh, my skill and my equipment and my skies to really. Uh, uh, pull it out, even despite the 100 plus hours of total integration time.
But anyway, this is what I got. I think it's decent enough for now. Um, if you like this video, if you thought the image is pretty cool, uh, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed to this channel, now would be a great time to hit that subscribe button. Uh, my goal is to produce a workflow video at the very least for nearly every image that I process. And I've got three telescope rigs running now on a regular basis, so I've got a steady flow of uh, information coming in. I also have some classic tutorials on my YouTube channel, uh, including a basic PixInsight tutorial that's uh, a much more detailed step through process than uh, my typical workflow video. And certainly, I mean, this video here, this is just me showing how I did things. This is definitely not intended uh, to be a tutorial for anyone. All right, I've prattled on enough. Uh, clear skies, everyone, and good evening.